I mean, some, I have tried a lot. But the right. only way to release a spirit attachment is by dealing with your emotions. Right? Because what happens often the time is we, we can talk to a group of spirits who are attached to a certain emotion in us, that group of spirits moves off, and all that happens is another group of spirits move in, who have the same emotion. And this is why many people who are mediumistic in the audience have this constant cycle of, a, of certain type of spirits coming in all the time. And that's because of our emotions. But if we raise our emotions and we deal with the emotions, experience them and release them, then the same law of attraction no longer occurs. And when people come to visit us from a spirit world, we also are not affected in the same way by their visits. So, so it's a bit like an angry person can come to you now and say a lot of things to you that might upset you, but then when you deal with a group of grief emotions that they triggered, if the same angry person comes at you and yells at you again, you'll have released those emotions so you won't have the same effect anyway. But it's also highly unlikely he'll come to you because he will have felt that you've dealt with those emotions and he doesn't feel like he can get, say these things to you now and get away with them as much. And that's a natural occurrence of the law of attraction. Yeah? Thank you. Um, so, so focus on the one fear. What I do generally is uh, try, I like to focus on the biggest fear because the biggest fear always has the biggest release, has the biggest change, you get the biggest joy afterwards. You also feel more confident afterwards. Does that make sense? Well, you think about it. If I deal with a big fear, then what, what about all these little fears? Are they going to be hard? No, they're going to be much easier now, right? And remember I said right at the start that one of the major fears that we have is that we're not able to cope. So if you're able to cope with one of these big fears and you teach yourself you're able to cope, then you're going to be feeling pretty, pretty good about yourself, aren't you? And in the end, you'll feel so good about yourself that you'll know you can deal with any fear that comes along. doesn't matter if someone even puts a gun to your head. You know you're going to be able to deal with it. And so you'll be able to work your way through that fear and feel the feeling anyway. All right. Jen, you want to over here if we have a mic? Oh, she's got the just a mic cause so that we can hear it. Is the first fear, did you say, can't cope? The, remember that was the biggest fear that we talked about initially, the fact that I believe I can't cope with my emotions. And, the second, and, the, and, a, and another big fear that we have, primary fear, is that we feel we're alone. Yeah. And they're often the two big fears that stop us from experiencing everything else. No, my first one I feel is I can't cope in life. Well, that's the same thing. I can't cope with my emotion. Can you see the relationship? Why can't you cope in your life? <laughs> because you were afraid of the feelings that it's going to come up if you do. It's the only reason. So it's all to do with your emotion. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. So focus on the one fear. Let yourself do that. Now, I focus on the fear. So I'm praying to God about, not about feeling the fear, but being honest, I'm being, when I say praying, I'm being honest with God about the fear. I don't want to feel this fear. I don't feel it's fair. You know, I'll be honest about my emotions about this fear. You'll find that that in itself unlocks something within you. And you'll find different events will occur during the week. Now, when you do this, when an opportunity comes up and the fear is triggered again, Allow yourself to experience it in that moment. Right? So, I've got a fear of personal harm. I drive along in my car, someone cuts me off, and I get into anger. What have I just done? I've just not allowed myself to feel, in that moment, the fear that I had. You see, by getting angry, you say, oh, you effing idiot, whatever. What am I doing? I'm actually blaming the other person now for the fear they triggered in myself and I'm not allowing that, I'm not a, consciously seeing the fear that I have. I'm now just projecting it outwards. That's not what I'm suggesting here. So what I'm suggesting instead is I'm driving along, someone cuts me off, I feel the rage rise in me and that desire to respond and then I say to myself, ah, I am afraid because of what he did. What am I afraid of? What am I afraid of? 
And, I, and to be frank with you, I'd pull over on the side of the road and just sit with that for five or ten minutes. There's nowhere else you need, your soul needs to be but in that moment, <laughs> right? So even if you're late for whatever it is that you're driving towards, it's better off spending that ten minutes or five minutes that it takes just to work out what that fear was about. Because right at that moment you are the closest to that fear. Right at that moment. Can you see why that's the case? Because the law of attraction happened at that moment. You see, it's the law of attraction that happens at the moment that is driven by all sorts of things going on. My emotions at that moment, my thoughts at that moment are all a part of the construction of my law of attraction. So if I pull over at that moment and feel the emotion at that moment, that's the most powerful time I have to connect with this. More powerful than any other time. What most of us do though is we drive home, you know, park in the garage, we go in, yep, oh, there's some things tied up with the kids, so we do that. We get, to, you know, get the cooking cook going and we do that and get ourselves ready for bed. And then at nine o'clock at night we're going, what in the hell was that emotion again? I can't even remember what it was, right? And then when we try to get to it, it's like, I've got no hope of getting to it now. And so you know what has to happen now? Drive along in the car again, <laughs> right? <laughs> It's sort of like Groundhog Day. You've seen that movie? Yeah, I love Groundhog Day. It's a great movie. But you know, there's a lot of principles in that movie that we need to apply. One is if we keep doing the same thing every day, we're going to get the same result. Another is if we keep doing things driven out, out from emotions disharmonious with love, we are going to keep having things not happen the way we would actually desire them in the end to happen. Right? They're really good principles from that movie, I think. And what I would do there is allow myself to stop and pull over and feel the emotion. But now I don't even need to do that. We can be driving along, something happens, and I go straight into tears driving along, right? And, and I'm quite okay with that. And Mary's quite okay with that too uh, now. So, so we'll be crying along. Sometimes Mary's crying, sometimes I'm crying. So when you drive past our car, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> people drive past and they look like, you know. What's going on with them too? Like, they must be having a fight or something and quite often we're feeling totally different emotions. But, um, but yeah, that, that can happen quite naturally then and you can be dealing with emotions as you go quite naturally. All right, so we've done the anger list, we've done the fear list, we've focused on one of the fears and we, what we're doing is we're praying now in truth about this fear, we're trying to focus on this fear with our relationship with God because it's about our relationship with God in the end, it's preventing it. And so what we do then, um, how's everyone now? Is everyone a bit cool? Yeah. The air conditioning system's awesome in here, isn't it? It's like, we might want to turn off the air conditioning system now. So, um, the, uh, so focus on one fear and deal with that one fear. Now, the issue with fear is that when we know we're afraid, it works in a very similar way to anger, right? When we know we're afraid and we're now totally in truth about our fear and we no longer have any anger blockages about dealing with our fears, so in other words we've finished swearing with God, we've finished swearing at ourselves and we've now got into this state where we actually do want to feel the emotion of it, very rapidly after that you'll feel the grief connected with that fear and you'll find it will happen like I, nowadays if I'm in the right space and I've dealt with those blocking emotions and I say, and I say um, I'm just afraid of da -da, da -da, whatever it is I'm afraid of, within five seconds later I'm generally crying about that thing I'm afraid of. Does that make sense? Once you've dealt with all the blockages that will happen just naturally. So, so what I'm finding is the majority of us are struggling to get to causal emotion because we think we have to go to causal go to causal, right? Sometimes I hear some of you saying that. It's almost like a slogan, right? <laughs> go to causal, go to causal. And, and what really needs to happen is we need to experience our blocking emotions first. Right? So we need to experience our rage and anger, for example, with God about having these laws. We need to experience what it feels like to be in this state where we're not connecting with an emotion and how frustrating it is. We need to experience what it feels like to be in so much fear and what the fear is about. And when we've experienced those emotionally, 
they're all now out of the way of our system. They're, our, they're gone out of our system now. Now the underlying causal emotion which is generating the majority of my law of attraction pops its head up and we can feel it. And it's quite, it's quite that easy when you actually deal with the blockages first. If you don't deal with the blockages first and you're trying to get at the causal emotion all the time, which is usually causal childhood grief, what, what's happening is you're trying to get it, but all these blockages are like, weigh, you know, they're like lead weights weighing you down from, from actually getting at the underlying emotion anyway. And, and it's so hard, you've got to sort of almost force yourself into it. And then even then it doesn't feel like you've dealt with it, right? So this is why many of you feel like, oh, I'm, I tried to get at that cause and I cried for a little bit, five minutes, and oh, I'm out of it again. Then I tried it again the next day, I'm frustrated. Now I'm starting to get frustrated after a week of that, right? It doesn't need to be that way because all we need to do is focus on the blockages to that causal rather than the causal emotion itself. Right? It's the blockages that prevent you from feeling. It's the blockages that everyone around you, the, the, the environment around you created in you to prevent you from feeling. When you remove the blockages, you will feel just naturally, just like a child does. That's what will happen. Anytime you don't feel naturally like that, it's because of the blocking emotion. The key is to feel the blocking emotion. That makes sense to everyone? Okay. So, what we want to do as well it now is tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to focus on to some of the fears. And what I'm going to do tomorrow is focus more upon talking about the fears themselves and what, and, and what kind of things are happening behind the scene. Now just to give you an illustration of that, what we're going to do for instance with the spirit fear. You know many of you have a fear of spirits, right? Um, there's a good song uh, but is it Deaf Leopard? Uh, fear of the Dark? Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. Fear of the Dark. Iron Maiden. Um, fear of the Dark is a song about fearing how you walk into a room, nobody's there, but you feel like somebody's there. Or you're walking outside, right, and, and in the dark. <laughs> I don't know what's happening again. It's the trouble with spirits being around. Um, you're walking outside in the dark and all of a sudden you get this eerie feeling yeah, you've had that? Yeah. This is eerie, creepy feeling. Yeah. <laughs> this eerie, creepy feeling, and you look behind, and nobody's there, and you sort of feel like going inside pretty rapidly. <laughs> or, uh, you know, you're walking along, you might be a lady walking along in Brisbane or something like that in the city, and then you're walking along and you're by yourself, and then all of a sudden you feel a bit creeped out. Right? And you turn around and you notice that there's a few guys looking at you and uh, projecting some things at you. And then you walk a bit further and you notice one of them is sort of following you sort of thing. Like, you start feeling a bit, what, what's motivating all of that? Like, these are all fears like, about spirits that can be related. Um, or there's, you know, something starts moving in your house. Have any of you had that happen? Where something moves in your house? Or, you put something there on the desk and you know you put it there it's for certain, right? And it's not there anymore. And you go and ask uh, your partner and no, they never moved it and children, no. And you know you put it there. And then a few days later you find it in a drawer tucked away somewhere. Right? <laughs> so you find that having go on. I'm just imagining... <laughs> Just imagining all the domestic disputes that are now going to be labelled with it was a spirit, I yeah. so put it. <laughs> yeah. These things all happen though. And, uh, and so what, what we finish up doing is um, we start, this starts connecting with some of our childhood fears about spirits, right? Because we have a lot of childhood fears about spirits. Ben? I just had a question yep. related to that. A lot of people have told me things like, oh, fairies are moving it around and whatever. Yep. Is that really happening or are fairies just someone's imagination? Sp spirits can move just things. Just spirits. Spirits can move things around, But yes. what's this whole fairy thing about? Well, you see, um, quite often people um, in the New Age beliefs feel that, and, and this is perpetrated by spirits, by the way, is quite often these spirits are in a poor condition and so what they do is they gather together and create, create an image that they project in anybody's mind of what they're doing, right? 
And sometimes the image is totally different than the persons themselves involved in the act. And because they have the ability to connect to you emotionally, they have the ability to connect to your sensory apparatus, which we talked about last Sunday, what, what happened is that they can then feed you images and all sorts of things. And sometimes people who are mediumistic get these images of these little goblins or little fairies doing different things and so they call them a fairy. But in reality all it is is a spirit or a group of spirits just trying to play or muck about, some of them malevolent, some of them, some of them feeling there's no harm to it and they do all sorts of things. And sometimes they can, they can move objects, yes, and so they do. And uh, this is what a lot of times the Ouija board's all about, you know. You go along to, some of you in the past may have been along to a seance of some kind, you'll sit around, you know, holding hands and, and there's the board in the front and, and you, or, you know, things move and spell out different things. Of course, there's totally different ways to connect with you, but, but that's one way that's a bit freaky and it has its physical impact, you see. And so a lot of times spirits uh, have all of these different things occurring. What we would like to do tomorrow is talk a bit more detail about that and talk about the fears. What I want to do is trigger you with some of the fears about it. What these spirits actually do do. Yeah, what you do as well. Yeah. And, and what we will do is we, we connect with that, right? And, and we start feeling our own fears about what's going on here, right? And, um, and then we're starting to deal with some of our childhood stuff about spirits. You see, every single one of you can see spirits. Like, you have the sensory apparatus to see spirits. You have the sensory apparatus to talk to spirits. You have the sensory apparatus to smell. You have the sensory apparatus to do all of these different things. Hear them, right? We're just not doing it because our fears shut down all those bodily and sensory apparatus functions because of our childhood emotions. And so what we need to do is trigger some of those emotions. And some of you have already tried doing some of that, haven't you, and had some benefit from that. And then tomorrow as well we'll look at the, the issue of um, earth change events. And what I'm going to do is talk to you about a few of the things that I feel are going to happen. Well, I might be wrong, by the way, but hopefully it will scare the death out of you. And then we'll... <laughs> And then you'll start wondering about it. You know, you, you'll be like going home and saying, oh, shall I sell my house? And what, what shall I do with my kids? And, <laughs> you know what I mean? All these different things. And, and my purpose is not for you to do any of those things, but rather to feel your fears that you have about that. Does that make sense? Let yourself feel your fears about it. So that, and the next thing is, go, oh, that's an interesting phone you got there, Peter? Like, Sorry. <laughs> that's <all right. laughs> It's a phone off place. <laughs> Don't you know that? It's your own house. <laughs> and so, so what we need to do is we need to allow ourselves to connect to some of those fears, right? If we can connect to some of those fears, then the things that we're afraid of happening won't obviously happen, but also we'll get to the causal emotion inside of us why we feel constrained. You see, when it comes to something like earth change events, for example, Many of us are doing one of two different things. Many of you have heard of it before, right? Many of you have gone to seminars where people have talked about, in detail even, some of you have gone to seminars that, where people have talked about quite specifically what's going to happen in this region here on the Sunshine Coast, for example. And you go home and you go, oh, hopefully it will happen in a few years' time after a fast. Or, you know, we, we have this tendency to do one of two things. We either overreact in our fear Right? So we go and sell our house, go and buy this property out there and then 20 years later nothing's happened <laughs> and we decide to come back. Right? We are, so we do that. Or what we do is we act out of our very in, head in the sand emotion type emotions which is I don't want to know about that, I don't want to know about it, I, I don't think it's going to happen to me, it's not going to happen to me and I bury my head in the sand and in the end things, when things happen I'm not going to be prepared in a loving way towards myself, you see. And in the end, if I am acting lovingly towards myself, I would be prepared automatically, actually, if you think about it. And we'll talk about some of that tomorrow. But um, the key is to deal with our fears about the issue. Now, some of you have a terrible feeling about being alone or terrible feelings of fear about losing your children or terrible feelings about losing your parents, even, or terrible feelings that you're going to be the only person alive of your whole family that not a single person on this planet will you know anymore 
when these earth change events occur. Some of you have got that fear too, right? So what we want to do is start addressing these fears. So I'll give you a list of movies. Some of them are just about to be released. There's the movie 2012, right? Just about to be released. Everyone, I suggest you see it. Everyone. I can't pay for you all to see it though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my suggestion is for you all to see it because it's an interesting movie and uh, a lot of the events portrayed in the movie are similar to the kind of events that will be occurring. So it's a, very, it's a, a lot of this stuff is very much uh, coming from the spirit world at the moment in order to bring up the awareness of the human race into what's going to happen and become prepared. Now, of course, you can do what you want with that. My suggestion is to go into your fear, don't act upon your fears, go into your fears and feel them. That's what we're, this exercise is about. If we can feel our fears and work our way through them, next month when I start talking about what will happen earth change events, you go, oh, it doesn't worry me. Like, it doesn't worry me not because I'm, you know, not got any care about my own life, but it doesn't worry me because I know I'm going to be in the right place at the right time with the right resources and everything's going to be fine because I know that I've dealt with all of that emotionally, right? Now many of us have conspiracy theory things going on and all these other things going on. That's all fear related stuff, right? And that doesn't help us at all get through those emotions. It, what it does is it locks us up and a lot of those fears are related to our childhood that we need to allow ourselves to deal with. Some of you have other fears like religious fears. Like I, have, I get many emails of people, you know, who you, you'd be surprised. They've, they've only ever had religion from, from the age of zero to sort of seven or eight years of age and then they didn't go anymore. And yet, there's still all sorts of beliefs. If I'm not baptised, I won't be saved. I've had people say, how important is baptism? Uh, oh, I don't know how important <laughs> baptism is. Like... To me, it's not important at all. Uh, if you've got an emotion about it, of course it's going to be important. But, but if you're asking how important it is to God, do you think God cares about a bit of sprinkling of water on your head? Like, as if that's going to do something for you? Like, sprinkle the water on your head. Now they're saved. Like, sprinkle the water on their head. Now they've dealt with all their emotions. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Trust me, if, if that's how easy it was to deal with your emotions, all of you would have got baptised, right? So... So that's not how it's going to work at all. So, but often we have locked in childhood beliefs, you see, coming from our parents. And, and, and while we laugh about it, these are serious beliefs because they affect us in our day-to-day -day life oftentimes. And so we need to allow ourselves to trigger them. So our goal tomorrow is to try to trigger some of those. A lot of us have some issues about anarchy. You know, the kind of anarchy that you have in a war where people go ahead and do things that they possibly wouldn't normally do with the constraint of law, because there's no law anymore, now they do it. Now, that's a pretty scary thing for most people, isn't it? Like, and there's lots of different movies about that kind of anarchy now too, like you can, that you can see to trigger those emotions. And they are scary movies, some of them. Right? A lot of you have a, have a, a deep fear of losing your mind on the divine love path. <laughs> it's already happened, somebody says. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean the type of losing your mind that you go feeling like you're going to go crazy, that you're, that you're nuts now. I'm listening to this guy who says he's Jesus. That straight away makes me nuts. And then on top of that, you know, I'm doing all of these emotional things that are painful. That's, that's pretty nutty. And then, you know, by the time you list four or five of these things, you start feeling that you are. Well, that's a fear. <laughs> That's the fear. There's some really good movies to help you trigger those fears. Right? You've seen the movie Memento? You ever seen that movie? Some of you might have seen. That's an interesting movie to trigger some of those fears of being controlled and manipulated by someone else and not remembering and all those things. There's, a, there's also um, some other movies along those lines. You've seen Requiem for a Dream? That's like... like Mary feels traumatised from that movie. So, By the way, a lot of the movies that I'll be listing... Uh, tomorrow, these are all going to be on the list tomorrow. Um, there are a lot of the movies are R-rated and are graphic. Okay, so so you have to deal with that emotion as well. Why would Jesus recommend you to see an R-rated movie that's graphic? <laughs> Go and deal with that emotion. <laughs> AJ, I've 
I've already watched some of the movies that you've recommended, and they're not movies that I would normally want to watch. Mm -hmm. I just heard somebody say here, I don't watch scary movies, and that's always been my thing too. So would your advice be if we don't normally or we don't want to watch scary movies, then we need to watch it? Um, I don't feel that you need to traumatise yourself in different areas. What I'm doing here is what, you, what you'll do, remember I recommended to you earlier to scan this list that I give you and to feel the resonant emotion inside of yourself when you read the title. There's a lot involved in that. There's some spirits helping you through the process. And my suggestion there is to allow yourself then to trust those emotions about what you should do. But a lot of times what we do with movies, music, books and all that is we read a certain genre or we do a certain thing because of this set of emotions that are within us that we don't want to trigger. So in other words, a lot of times we're avoiding our fears. You see, a celestial spirit can look at every single thing that's happening here on Earth with love. That means he can look at what's happening in Brazil with 12-year-old children raping and murdering others and they can look at that with love. Uh, and there's a movie called City of God that is about that. Now, a celestial spirit can look at that with love. So if we can't look at love and we have fear or other emotions come up, then there's just emotional things going on for us. The key is to identify these. This is all about helping you identify your fears. You're not necessarily going to get through them, but you're going to, after this exercise, be a lot more honest about them. All right? And remember, you can't feel a causal emotion unless you're honest about your fears capping it. So this is part of the process. And like there are all sorts of movies in this list that we're going to give you that will be that you need to trust some of your intuition with. And my suggestion is if you yes, if you avoid certain types of movies, there's generally something in that. Quite often people recommend to my Mary and myself, they know we like watch a movie occasionally, and they recommend certain movies and we watch it and there's no emotional reaction in us whatsoever. And the person told us that they were crying for three or four hours with that movie in. So you see, oftentimes it's not the same emotion that you have that other people have, right? Towards something. So don't expect that you'll connect with all of these ones that uh, are in this list, right? There'll be certain emotions inside of you that connect with certain emotions inside of the movie and if you allow yourself to feel, you'll be able to connect with some of the fears that you have. And what we're trying to do is list some of the generalised fears that are going to prevent you in the future from being at one with God. That's what we're trying to do. Here. So the goal is for us to be honest about our fears. That's the goal. If you're honest about your fears, you can start to feel the causal emotion about the fear. Does that make sense, everyone, what the goal is? Yeah. So um, what we're trying to do as well is give you a few snippets of, of some of these movies to show you what you're up against. <laughs> um, now, um, a lot of them will be quite uh, graphic, so you might not want to have your children with you tomorrow if we do do that. We, we might do it upstairs or downstairs depending on how the light system goes. Um, so just, I'm just warning you in advance uh, about that. Um, I don't want to be responsible for re-traumatising your children. Um. That's, that's something that I was actually wondering about because um, how much... Um, yeah, whether like because you recommended for me to watch war movies last week, mm. and you said that I would have trouble with my equipment. Well, I came home and Sol informed me that the television wasn't working, <laughs> so I bought a new television this week. But I um, I watched the uh, boy in striped pajamas with him, and I, yeah, I, I was struggling with how much I should involve him in movies that I watch. Well. The truth is that when you've dealt with your emotion, your children will not have an emotional response to what you watch. You see, your children's emotional response is generally the result of your own emotional response and their interaction with their unhealed emotions with you. So it's very important to understand the interaction that's going on. But um, like my, with myself, my feelings are I deal with my emotions without anybody else being a part of that particular process except when the other person's involved <coughs> in the process itself. So I don't expect you to share my emotional journey and I don't expect my children to share my emotional journey, no matter what their age. All right? What I'm trying to do is focus on my own emotion. 
and deal with my own feelings. But in the case with the boy of the striped pyjamas, these are actual events that do, do, did occur. Like when, It's a fictitious portrayal, fictitious portrayal of events that occurred in the, in the Second World War, right? So um, these kind of things happened and they are historically accurate things that happened. My feelings are if there is an emotional content in you, then there will certainly be an emotional content in your child. Yeah, he, he, loved, he loved it. He thought it was a really powerful movie. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking that I just leave it up to him, saying, look, I'm yes. watching this because, yeah. and, and leave it with you, him. Generally, so. your children will be in a better state than yourself to know what's the right movie for them to watch or not, because they themselves are usually much more connected to their own emotions than you are to your own. You see, we're, we've, we've got layers of years of denial. Our child has got hardly any, right? And particularly if we've been open emotionally with them, our child's got very little. So, you know, movies that have traumatised me, when I say traumatised, I've had lots of emotions to deal with as a result of watching them. And my uh, younger son has hardly, has hardly any effect on him. Um, I went to see Saving Private Ryan. You have seen that movie? Yeah. And for the next three days I was suicidal, right? And uh, it was, it, I had, had a really strong, had to really keep myself in line to not do anything about it and just feel the emotion of it. So for, for three or four days, I just had these suicidal feelings which I cried about for four days. Yeah. And, and, I, and I came out of that and now I've since seen the movie again and not had a reaction. Yeah. Myself and Mary recently watched a very powerful war movie called We Were Soldiers had hardly any reaction on myself, but huge reactions on Mary, because by now, I've, like, I've watched quite a lot of these movies and dealt with a lot of the emotions of it. Yeah. And seeing all this spirit involvement now and all those kind of things too, so. It's time. Um, if I want to trigger my fear, is it a bad idea to go stay somewhere <laughs> by myself? and then get freaked out by noises and stuff around me? Is yeah, that no, that's bad? good. Okay. But, but, again, experience it emotionally. Yeah, because I stayed at Maury's place out at Mergen the yeah. other night. <laughs> yeah. The first night, um, I was fasting as well to sort of get into the emotions yeah. a bit more. Um, and I was triggered really badly. I was watching one of your DVDs and you said something about um, the the spirits and how they can manipulate you and stuff and um, that just triggered something yeah. and then I went into my fear but I was I was like I was so fearful that I was kind of crying but I didn't want to make noise um, yeah. so I was feeling like I wanted to be aware of every like the sounds and stuff around me because it was windy and it was really quite horrible and I was in the dark and I didn't want to turn the lights on yeah. so I thought um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean no I, wa I wanted to turn the lights on but I thought no I need to stay in this fear yeah. longer is like was what I did the yeah, best thing good. yeah that's good stay okay. in the fear what I do too is I just long for God to help me stay now that I'm in the emotion stay in it as long as possible so I want to stay in that emotion as long as possible as long as possible and and, and the other thing with fear to always remember, by the way, when you're dealing with fear-based feelings, breathe diaphragmatically. Just try to stay breathing. Breathing is part of the releasing process. If you can breathe during fear, you're releasing a lot of the terror. Because what terror does it is lock you up with your breath. That's how you lock it down. So it's very important to breathe. Um, so... Um Looking back on that night, I don't think I was breathing properly. Right, yep. um, so would that just mean that I wouldn't um, sort of access the fear? Well, you would have accessed well. some through what you've done, but you need to go deeper and just breathe. There'll be more of it there. And then would that have been like a childhood fear? or Yeah. So yeah. that it wouldn't necessarily be something below that? or? Um, no, there are childhood fears associated with spirits. Spirits that you saw when you were little that were in a dark place. Yeah, because I was, <laughs> I was getting freaked out like with the doors to other rooms and I, like I couldn't see into the rooms and I was looking around and I was looking under the bed and I'm thinking, yeah. ah! These are very childhood emotions. Yeah. And so the key is to allow yourself to feel those emotions as you're working your way through it. And to breathe. Okay. Yeah, and to breathe. I'll do that next time. And to breathe, yeah. <laughs> Always breathe while you're doing it. Many of you will have these emotions, right? So you have these emotions of fear and terror about it. 
All right, well, it's around half, half five, isn't it? Um, so um, I was wondering whether Monica would like to have a chat with these spirits. If you want to hang around, you can. Um, um, some of you might wish to go. Sorry, can you... To make an announcement about the move tomorrow, if you're... Are you oh, yes, that's then? right. Um, apparently there's going to be a showing of a movie at 12 um, that you, you organised with Angela to show. What was the movie called again? Um, I'm not actually sure what it's called, but it's about the, the school in Russia. Oh, it's about the school in Russia for the, the Anastasia stuff. Yeah. So if, you, if the people who are interested in that would like to know more about educating along that particular line, then there's a movie on that um, that you might want to attend at midday tomorrow upstairs in the other hall upstairs that's going to be. Is that right? Is that where it is? Yep. All right. All right. Simon, you want to join us? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're going to deal with some of these fears. What we want to do, there's... There's been uh, some spirits with us today who are in a lot of fear <coughs> and uh, they've been the ones impressing or their feelings upon you and what we wanted to do was start allowing the connection to at least some of these ones and talking to them and, uh, and maybe there'll be a spokesman or two who can speak for, the, for a few of them and myself and Monica will just, uh, Monica will be the channel for them and I'll, uh, and I'll, t I'll speak to them. But... Um, one thing in this, uh, in this process, by the way, your energy has a lot of effect on this. So the more projection you have at Monica, the harder it is for Monica to maintain the connection with them. She's already feeling through emotions of like feeling unworthy to do with this and, and all those kind of things. That's one of the reasons why she wants to do it, to trigger those fears. But the more you project at her, the more difficult this whole thing becomes. And what we want to do is try and help some of the spirits who attended today work through a group of their fears, so that's what, what we're doing here. Um, there's quite a mixed bunch, actually, which is the first time I've experienced such a, um, a wide variety of spirits. So mm -hmm. it's actually quite difficult to... But th there's a man who's come forward um, initially. Um, he's got a group of maybe about 25 to 30 people with him. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you want to start with him. Mm -hmm. His main concern, and again, it feels like a religious one, mm -hmm. is that they're being led astray. Mm -hmm. So he's afraid of being led astray. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're afraid of walking down the wrong path, is what he's saying. Um, if they look at uh, the history of that, they'll see that they walk down what they can see now is the wrong path when they're on earth. And, they, and they, what was the path that they were walking when they were on earth? Could they tell me a little bit about that? We lived in a small town in America, mm -hmm. the country you call America. Mm -hmm. In a very, very small town, we lived in a small community. We had a small church. And our entire life revolved around our religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. And the church was a folk point of our community. Mm -hmm. And what were your religious beliefs? The word I'm getting is, is it muni municipal? Municipal, I can't hang on, municipal. Sorry, someone may have to help me out. It's like mu municipal, but with ality at the end, so min does that make sense? Municipal, ality, yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you could just maybe repeat what you're trying to say. Say that again? Municipality. Yes, that's it. That was the key origin of their whole church. 
So it's a Christian-based belief. Yes. Yep. And, and I don't know if it'll help, but he's wearing kind of slight ruffles, kind of cotton ruffles on his neck and like a suede type tunic. So, yeah, again, almost farmer-like. Yep. And what, and what uh, years did they pass? 1706. Right. Okay. So 300 years or so, they've been living in this state of fear about their beliefs. Yes, we have. Yeah. So what's attracted you to the group here today? We feel that we're being shown a different way, mm -hmm. that the people that we've been listening to up until now are not telling us the truth. Mm -hmm. And we feel that there's something truthful about what you're saying, but we're really afraid to fully trust what you're saying. Is the main reason why you don't trust what I'm saying because of your fears about God and that you'll get punished? Yes, sir. Do you, do you feel that, um, the feeling I have from you is that you feel basically that you've been punished for the last 300 years for your beliefs on earth? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We worked so hard to do the loving and my thing. Yep. And that we've been sent to this place. Yeah. And it's not anything like we expected. It's not heaven that you expected. No. No. And it's not even like earth, is it? Where no, it's worse. Yeah. So it's a really dark uh, place. Mm. Yes, it's very empty and cold. Yeah. And the reason why you're in that place is important to understand. Um, if you think about your religion, a lot of times it was empty and cold with regard to love. Do you remember that? Yes. So quite often it was based around like rules and laws. Many rules and regulations which sometimes didn't allow for kind-heartedness at all. That's right. And so a lot of times love was sacrificed for the sake of law. Yes. Remember that? Yes. Sir. So, so it's important for you now to say to start focusing on this area of love in your life, and the reason why things where you, why you are where you are is because of the lack of love in your previous practices, and so you can see that if a person's in a state of love, then obviously there's going to be a different set of practices, isn't there? When there's, a combina when there's law versus love, love will always win. Yes. You see that? But we felt we were being loving. Mm. And that's the area emotionally that you'll need to look at. The truth is that, that you weren't being loving at the time. And, uh, and the key is to allow yourself to look at that. Now, what happens with the way, the with way it works in the spirit world is that when you are in a certain state of love, you are attracted to a location that's in the same state of love. Does that make sense? And that's why the location that you're in at the moment feels cold and empty. You see? So we were sent here because of how we feel. Well, actually, you weren't sent there. What actually happened was you created this location just for your, to, to mirror your soul condition. Does that make sense? Now, the key is to allow yourself to see that firstly, and then we'll be able to help you move beyond that. Right. It's an awful location, isn't it? All right, well, what, what we need to do is, is just talk to you a little about what you can do instead of that, all right? What, we, what we're going to do now is ask some of our celestial friends who are bright spirits. They're really bright. You can see them as sort of white lights initially. And then if you focus a little on them, you'll start seeing them as people. And they do tune themselves to your state. You can see those people with you now? Yes, they're coming into our little group. Yep. Now what these people are, are these people are people who have lived on earth in a very, very similar way to you. These people lived on earth in a very religious, dogmatic way, but they didn't show very much love uh, as a result. And what they've done is they've managed to learn about love while they were in the spirit world. Does that make sense? In a place like this? In a place like where you are. In fact, we can show you that um, if you want. The place where they lived. Was it worse than here? And some of the places where some of the people you're coming to have been worse than where you currently live, yes. I don't want to see any worse place. No, no you don't need to see any worse. Where you are is bad enough, see? <laughs> But what we need to do is just help you come to terms with the fact that if you listen to these particular spirits, they'll be able to help you work through the lessons of love that you need to learn in order to progress. Does that make sense? Yes. But one of the first things you're going to need to deal with is this fear that you have of getting it wrong. Yes. So what, because you've been 300 years in a location that is very, has been 
well, it's actually nearly 400 years, uh, almost 300 years, in a location that has been very damaging to yourself, you've then can't gone down the track of not trusting anything as a result, right? And what you need to do now is trust the fact that you've been drawn here to have a talk with us, you've been drawn here to deal with these particular emotions, and these other spirits have been drawn to you to help you through this process. And the key for you is to allow yourself now to deal with some of these fears that you have and work through those fears emotionally. So partly that's what you're already doing by crying about you know, what you're afraid of. I feel a damn fool now, sir. <laughs> you feel a damn fool now. I do. Yeah. But, but you see, a lot of times we, uh, we have all sorts of emotional reasons why we don't progress. Right? And there's many people on earth who are in just as dark a place as what you've been when you were here, right? So the key is to not judge yourself so much, but rather just let yourself feel your emotions. And that applies to all of your group. So what we'd like to do is just, the celestial spirits are now ready to have a chat with you. So they can yes. talk with you about your fears. And my suggestion is to trust them, but it's going to be difficult for you to trust them yes. because of this emotion that you have about being afraid about being misled. But if I can just point something out to you, you notice how happy these spirits look. Yes. See how happy we haven't look? seen this since we've been here in all this time. And none of you have been that happy. No. Have you? So you need to trust at least that these people are more happier than you and they must be happier than you for a reason. Does that make sense? They must be doing something right, they I think. They must be doing something right. That's yes. right. Yep. And if you can allow yourself to work your th way through that emotionally and allow yourself to accept what they're telling you, they'll be able to tell you some of the truths that I taught when I was on the earth yes. that, that were misrepresented by your religion. Does that make sense? Yes. And once they work their way through those those truths and once you work your way through what you've been taught you'll see that there are many errors in what you've been taught and then there were some truths in what you were taught but you just didn't apply it in a loving way right and the key is to allow yourself to feel that and work your way through that emotionally no one is judging you and not even God is judging you actually what's happened is God has you created a location by your soul condition. In other words, by your emotions, you created the location you're currently in. And when you think about it, there's some positive things about that. Because that means that by your soul condition or by your emotions, you'll be able to create a new location. Something better than this. Something better than this, yeah. If you listen to your friends. Yes, if you ever listen to those friends, you know, we'll be able, they'll be able to help you progress through the spirit world. And you won't be locked in one place anymore. And you're sure they'll teach us the right thing? Well, those, those spirits uh, who have come to you, they're teaching the divine love path. They talk about that path, right? And, uh, and that's the path that I taught when I was on the earth in the first century. And that's the path that is the, that is the truth of connecting with God. I see. And the things that you were taught when you're on earth about God, a lot of those things are not very true, right? You know how you've been taught about God being a punishing God and yes. those beliefs? that entered you emotionally? We've blamed God for us being here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but actually what's... what? That's not true, Mitch. No, no, so. no, it's not true. What actually caused you to be where you are is your own condition that you yourself created through the choices and through the unloving acts that you created on it. Does that make sense? Yes. And so all you need to do now is forgive yourself for those things and work your way through a group of emotions about that and you'll be able to progress in the spirit world as well. Okay. Thank you, sir. No worries. Pleasure. What was your name? Peter Findweld. Peter Findweld. Yep. Yes, sir. Well, Peter, I hope yourself and your friends actually allow yourselves to work your way through those emotions and trust the people that... They're are talking to your friends now while I'm talking to you and they feel happier already. That's good. And you'll find actually that you progress very rapidly if you let yourself deal with some of these fears and feel some of the grief that you feel. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Right. Monica sometimes feeling what happens is the spirit's emotion connects with Monica's emotion and so Monica then cries because they're crying, right? And there's a sympathetic emotions if you like. Can we just maybe flick on those lights? Uh, and do you feel up to doing another or? Yeah, might as well go. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> got right. over the initial fear of kind of doing it, so yeah. Got over the initial fear. Yeah. All right. 
Boom. Actually, it might be easier with the light stage, actually. Just would, you like, would you like? Would you like to darken maybe these lights? Yeah, Shall we? Shall we just? Can we just put on the uh, um, alcove lights and turn off the main lights at the front here? Yeah, like that. That's great. There's, um, <laughs> it's okay it doesn't matter what the audience thinks. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a large group of women who've been badly oppressed by men yeah. and who really want to believe what you're saying is true, but yeah. they're really afraid of trusting you as well. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are fearful because a lot of them are crying at the moment as well. Yeah. So um, in the past you were um, basically oppressed by men when you were on Earth? <laughs> yeah. This is one of Monica's really big emotions that she's still working her way through, being oppressed by men. <laughs> so uh, we might not be able to do this particular group perhaps. Um. <laughs> Um, a lot of these women, it feels like a group from England, kind of possibly London. Yeah, and what time period? <laughs> About 1867. Yeah. Very poor women, um, and a lot of them prostitutes, I think. Yeah. Certainly have been sexually m badly mistreated by men. Yeah. And there's a woman here called Mary, something bra Mary, that's what called. What made you come along today, Mary? What, what's, <laughs> what's going on with you today? <laughs> we can feel your love, but we just find it so difficult to trust that you could be anything but hard to us. Yeah. <laughs> and we can see the light that shines from within you, but <laughs> you're so afraid that if we trust you, you will hurt us. Yeah. Men have been so cruel. <laughs> yeah. Um, what if I asked a group of women to come to you? Uh, would you feel a bit more trusting of a group of women coming? <laughs> yes, we would. Okay. There's many, many women here yeah. who feel the same. Yeah. What we're going to do though is ask yeah. a group of women to come to you who are, who are from the celestial realms. And many of these women have been oppressed like you have been oppressed when they were on earth. So can you see those women now approaching you? Yes, they have the same light as you have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you know, what we're going to show you a little is that some of these women have had the same kind of experiences, just so you can trust them, what they're going to do, is they're going to project into your mind some of the experiences they had when they were on Earth. Does that make sense? Are you starting to feel those, yeah? Can you see how it's the same kind of experiences that you've had? Yeah. It's okay to cry about them. <laughs> now understand it's very hard for you to trust to trust me. It's very difficult. And so what, what I was what I was like thinking is that these group of women are going to teach you very, very similar things to what I've been teaching you. But because there are women who have been in the same position as you, we'll be able to help you work through some of these particular things. But can I make a suggestion to you? Too? Yes. One of the things that you're going to need to deal with at some point in the future is your deep fear of men. Does that make sense? And, and these women have all dealt with that fear. All of them know how to deal with that fear. Yes. And if you can trust them, they will show you how to deal with that fear. Okay. 
Now, there's going to be times when you'll want to be angry with them because they'll tell you some things that you don't want to accept, right? Yes. My suggestion is every time you feel that anger rise in you, that you remember that you're just afraid. Okay. And you talk to them about how afraid you are instead of being angry. Does that make sense? Yes. There's every, so much anger here. Yeah. Every time you're angry, even if it's with these kind <laughs> spirits, what they're going to do is they're going to leave you for a while until you calm down in your anger. And then w when you get back into dealing with some of your fears, they'll come back to help you. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you, if you can actually allow yourself to go into the fear rather than keep choosing anger all the time, that will help you a lot to work your way through a lot of these issues with me. Now I know a lot of these men have hurt you terribly and there's whole lots of things that are happening to them in order to, for them to work through those emotions. The key for you is to not delay your emotional processing and not delay your connection with God just because the men have hurt you. You don't want to keep doing that. You, there's no need for you to stay where you currently are. Does that make sense? It's really hard. We hear what you're saying. It's, it's well, confusing because we feel there are men here that are angry at us too. Yes. Well, because, angry. because you're angry with men and where you are, that will attract men who are angry with you. Does that make sense? And so what happens then is you've got this intergender war almost going on, isn't it, between the two of you, between your group and the other groups of men that are there, and that's very damaging to the both of you. Who we feel they started it. Well, while that might be true, there is a whole group of emotions in you that you need to allow yourself to deal with about that. Yes. At the moment what's happening is because they started it, you feel that they should finish it by actually being nice, right? <laughs> But the problem with that is, is that you're delaying your own progression based on their condition. And when a person hurts you, they're usually in a worse condition than what you are. So what you're doing is you're waiting for the people in a worse condition to get into a better condition. Oh. And, that, and you might be waiting a long time doing that. You've already been waiting a hundred or so years. There's no need for you to wait anymore. So we can do this without having to deal with them, we can just do this ourselves. Well, if you deal with the emotions, they will go away from you. Does that make sense? Yes. And if you connect to God, you'll find that they'll no longer be attracted to you and they'll just leave you anyway. Uh -huh. But this is where you need to trust the lady spirits who are with you, who are going to help you work through those different emotions. Does that make sense to you? Yes, they feel very kind. Yeah. <laughs> and they have been through the same things you've been through and look at them now. And can you see what the men are doing to them? What are the men doing when they come to you? Nothing, they run. They run they away, go. see? See that? <laughs> see how those men who you were afraid of yes. seem to be afraid of the lady spirits who came. Yes. The lady spirits who came are happy. Why is this? Well, it's because of the amount of divine love they have in their souls. And the love that they have in their souls actually repels these men from them. Okay. The, the men are afraid of that love, right? Yes. And so they leave straight away. Yes. A powerful tool. Yes, and we can see this. Yeah? Yes. So you don't need to be worried about the men around you and how they're going to affect you doing this. So we are safe with them. Well, you're safe. And, and this is where if you receive divine love, if you start with God. listening to, to those things that we've been talking about here today a bit and that you've heard in different talks you've come to and also you start listening to those group of lady spirits who are with you you'll find you'll be able to work your way through these things really rapidly okay yes okay. And thanks for at least trusting me enough to have a chat with me you're very lovely though thank you thank you for helping us there's so many of us here yeah yeah how many of you are there there it's about 150 something, 156. Yeah. yeah. And, and did you Many. all come from the same time period? Yes, London. London in, in that time. In the 1800s. Yes. Many of us know each other. Oh, right. We've yeah. been here together. Yeah. Well, I'm sure from now on in the spirit world, you're going to have a much better, a better life. So if you let yourself listen to those spirits, you'll progress really well. We will. Thank you very much. My pleasure. How are you doing? Yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. That works with some of the Yeah, that's better. Yeah. That's good.
Yeah. Um, so what Monica's trying to do at the moment is working through her fears about dealing with mediumship sort of in front of a group. Does that make sense? Because it's been, she's been quite fine doing it by herself, quite a, a little bit more triggered doing it with a few people, but doing it in front of a group like this, this is like major, major for her. So, um, so wh what she's trying to do is just allow herself to stay with herself while she does that, instead of worrying about what's coming from the audience and projections and so forth just staying with herself. And what we're going to try to do in future actually is I, I want to connect with a lot of these spirits who are actually depressing the mood in the audience at times. And so when I notice that uh, these kind of things are happening and we have the opportunity to deal with it in this way, we'll be dealing with this and uh, we'll be do, doing more mediumship like this in front of the group just to help those spirits move on and then we can get back to talking about the conversation without everyone feeling that heavy, that heavy emotion coming from the spirits around us. The, the truth is that many of them are coming because they see the brightness in you growing and so they feel quite attracted to knowing why that's the case. And, uh, but they don't understand why that's the case and they can sort of, unless we connect with them emotionally, they can't really hear what I'm presenting. It's a bit like... Um, Sometimes it's the same for yourself, isn't it? When you're having a conversation that's just an intellectual conversation, many times you're hearing the words, but you're not really getting what's being said and it doesn't really enter you. For them, it's very much heightened like that. So for them, what happens is when, when they feel quite disconnected from me emotionally, they're hearing all these words, but you know, they're not understanding what's really being said and we need to talk with them uh, to help <coughs> them move through. So in the future, I hope that more and more of you mediums will consider doing things like this and, uh, and it will help quite a few groups. But as you can see from Monica, it's going to require you actually allowing yourself to deal with your emotions during the process. And the beauty is that if, when, you know, when the group of lady spirits come, Monica just could let herself cry in front of you without getting too worried about that. And that enabled those spirits to talk with me far more easily than if Monica had locked all that up inside of herself. Sure. And um, what's really interesting is when AJ mentioned this and suggested earlier on, I was really cool initially with it. And then I just went straight into fear. And the fear, and I, I feel this is why it was so much easier to, to do it. Um, I just went really deeply into a fear of actually, I have a huge fear of my safety and being killed. But it was a fear um, in particular of um, my life being in threat um, by expressing myself emotionally. To a group? Um, or to just anywhere in public or, or at home. And one in particular, um, which I've been struggling with this week, but I'm getting closer with, was literally I was threatened um, for a second time um, by a man with, you know, who would literally threaten to kill me if I made any noise at all. Um, yeah. So just even having taken the time out, because I could so easily have sat up here and just kind of tried to fundle my way through it and, and you know, not connect it, but by allowing myself to go that... Uh, more deeply, I, I just don't feel as scared now sitting up in front of people crying. Yeah. I think that's why I, I was uh, emotionally People's able to clear. release. I would not have been able to do that yeah. had I not just taken the time out to do that. That's really good. So and I, I said to the group before that you weren't here because you were oh, processing okay. some of your fear. So they heard <laughs> yeah. that. You didn't hear that, okay. but they heard that, okay. so they knew that. Yeah. Um, but I could feel you dealing with some of those fears as well, which is wonderful. Mm. Um, what you'll find if you want to practice your mediumship skills, uh, just as an aside, um, dealing with your fears is a major thing because, uh, because a lot of times uh, spirits in a poor condition are going to connect with fears and so forth and that's going to be quite damaging uh, to you as well if, you, if you're not releasing your fears and feeling your emotions. But anyway, that was the... You, <laughs> you can add what you want. <laughs> just... <laughs> I think something that really, uh, it was really emotional actually on my way home from the mediumship gathering last Sunday was quite a few people came up to me during the break asking how Michael Jackson was and I had only just worked through huge judgments about Michael Jackson and it was only when he passed over I started realizing the truth about Michael Jackson and how much love he, he actually had. And what was extraordinary was, I hadn't spoken to him, we'd only kind of chatted to Elvis about him, so we, we were kind of surmising, I suppose, a little bit. But what was so extraordinary from those, kind of, I think it was only maybe two or three inquiries from a very loving space about his welfare and his well-being and how he was doing, 
when I was driving home, he just popped in for a very, very, very brief chat, but it was a very emotional one. And he said he felt more love in this room than he felt from most people on earth at this time. And because of that, and because of feeling that love, that he was gonna do whatever it took to progress as quickly as he could. And it was such a beautiful, powerful thing because he feels such shame and grief that people didn't quite understand who he was, which obviously resonates with my own feelings at times. But he was so deeply touched by just, and it just showed me the power of just a small, tiny little group like this mm. can have such massive ramifications, um, not only on earth, but in the spirit world as well. And the amount of people he'll be able to help once he progresses. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Monica. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, for those of you who are mediums um, and have channeled a little bit about Earth Change events uh, for tomorrow, what I would like to read out is some of those uh, channelings if you have them. I'll just uh, have a look at them first, and the scariest ones I'll read out first, probably. <laughs> and then. <laughs> And that'll be part of our group tomorrow as well, hopefully. So, uh, but thank you very much for your company today and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. <laughs> now, you don't have to pack up the chairs today. Um, we'll be oh. vacuuming around them today and we'll pack up them tomorrow instead. So. <laughs> oh, sorry? Um, I'm standing here with my fear of speaking up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And I really would feel a, it's important for me to share uh, so that I can deal with the fear. Uh, as that process was going on, uh, I just went from one chunk to the next. Uh, so I don't hear well. I'm wearing hearing aids. As you were speaking with her, you were uh, looking at her. And so there wasn't nearly the amount of um, volume coming out this way mm -hmm. as there normally is. Mm -hmm. So I was just watching and feeling, okay, I'm not hearing, I have fear of not hearing, I have fear of not getting it, fear of being out of the loop, fear of not knowing, yeah. fear of feeling dumb, feeling unaware, uh, being out of the know, uh, being the only one who doesn't know, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. fear of being the only one who's not connected with God, yeah. uh, fear of not hearing God. I mean, it goes on and on and on, and then it, gets, it keeps chunking down. It was, it was a great process for me of fear of uh, saying, uh, if I don't hear, then I'll say something foolish. Yeah. Fear of looking foolish, and, and when I'm down now, I've got to the fear of feeling ashamed. Yeah. So, <laughs> just wanting to share the, the value wonderful. of that experience. Yeah, that's wonderful. And it's so good that, that you allowed yourself to step down into those things. Because that, that is a part of the law of attraction at work, of course. So it was really great that you put that into practice and just started stepping down into it. That's really good. And, th and that illustrates the power of the process, really. And now that you've got those fears, now you can pray about them and do all sorts of things about them, right? <laughs> Whereas before, you might not have been conscious of them. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, everyone.